edition of Stoppage Time, baby! Welcome to New York City, John Bucket Timer! Big thank you to our partners, Points Bet, for making this happen. We're on the big stage, you know. We're in a big city. Oh, yeah. The Bright Lights Buckets. They brought you here to entertain us here. So I'm just going to pass it over to you, entertainers. Go. Yeah, I can, I can definitely do that. Uh, for real quick, I'd like to shout out Ariel Epstein for giving us that DeAndre Ayton over 10.5 rebounds. I did go to the Barclays Center for the first time. We cashed that ticket in the third quarter, I believe. But it's been so much fun just seeing the city. Thank you to Points Bet. Thank you to Stoppage Time for getting me out here once again. I've loved every second of it, man. Listen, it's been an awesome time having you here. You can actually move your microphone in that middle bit there. So, yeah, just twist that bit where your left hand is there so it doesn't keep swinging around okay. a little bit. This guy? You this can guy? figure it out. Yeah, I got this. Uh, anybody who's not watching is probably listening and thinking, what the hell are the boys talking about? There okay, so yesterday we went to the Barclays Center. It was the Brooklyn Nets game um, against Phoenix Suns. Uh, it was a little surprise for Buckets because he's never been to an NBA game before. So I thought I'd surprise him. And um, Ariel Epstein gave us a, a little prop bet there that was just unbelievable. We were on the edge of our seat. We also had one from Kaz. Kaz gave us a good one as well, which is the money line for the Nets. So we were kind of rooting for both teams here, really, at the end of the day. It was awesome watching this game. Uh, we had a lot of fun, so it was really cool. What was your experience like? First time at NBA Arena? It was awesome. I love the looks we were getting from people, too, because we were kind of cheering for both teams there. So we'd cheer for the Nets basket, and then we'd cheer for the eight and rebound, and we had a couple couple good looks on us, but it was a ton of fun, dude. That was With a great time. Buckets in town, we are wrapping out the shows. I mean, we are just throwing them out as quickly as we possibly can because we know the content there has been delved by all of you. We appreciate all the follows, the listens, the likes, the subscribes, the views. That's what we want. The reviews are mean. They mean everything to me because I just love seeing our names, you know, with positivity. You got a really nice one as well. That nice uh, tweet that was sent to you yesterday. I thought it was awesome. Let me know when you're ready to actually jump on that one. That was great. Go. I'm ready. We got a tweet from Brian Blade that said, because of Buckets, I now or I know and now pay attention to more soccer than I ever thought I would. Now I'm listening to a soccer podcast too. What the hell is going on? Ian and Buckets are highly informative and entertaining. I mean, that's what it's all about, really. Isn't it? We're in the entertainment space, Buckets. It's not just about gambling here, right? We're in the entertainment space. We're in the sports media world. We are uniquely different, and that's what we're trying to be here. So we appreciate all these wonderful messages. Keep them coming. And when we get good ones like that, we will read them out on our show because that's what we do. We appreciate everybody uh, for obviously leaving all the comments and, and keep them coming to me and Buckets as well. Okay, let's get into it. We're going to rattle through a very quick show today. I'm going to try and beat a record time today. It's not easy for me to do it because I like to talk, especially when it comes to soccer. Um, but on Tuesday, uh, we had some best bets that we gave out on Monday's show. It was episode 27. Uh, we gave out a Tuesday best bet. We gave out a Tuesday parlay party. We gave out a Tuesday bonker bet. Um, buckets, uh, we had a pretty successful time between the two of us. I was coming off the back of a an 0 and 5 weekend. Yep. Let me repeat myself. 0 and 5 weekend. So I had massive doubts about myself. <laughs> and I still had massive doubts about myself while all these games were going on yesterday. But we had a goddamn good day. We had an incredible day. And we had a very stressful day. Because if you looked at a lot of these games in the 80th minute, we were not going to have a good day. But those last couple minutes and the stoppage time that we had in these games provided us with winner after winner after winner. I think, what, 5 and 1 combined between us? 5 and 1. I mean, that's incredible, really. After going on five Especially on cup games, which, in my opinion, are some of the hardest games you can cap because you never know who's starting. You never know who cares. You really never know what's going on. No, so. you don't. And, and that's why we called the show Stoppage Time because the extra goals that happen in the last five, ten minutes plus stoppage time is insane. And as Buckets pointed out, I was on five and uh, came in to this midweek fixture on Tuesday and I went three for three buckets. That's the kind of rebound I was looking for. I know you like to rebound with a lot of people on Hinge. I don't. I like to rebound <laughs> when it comes to the sports betting culture. Mm -hmm. Like The rebound I'm looking for is 100% record. So my rebound on Tuesday was probably what better than you could have even imagined of what you picked up on Hinge. I, I, no comp. Okay, no, 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 no. First of all, I do not use Hinge for rebounds, right? I'm looking right. for a sincere and honest relationship with another person, yeah. right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay, good. But yes, three and three was incredible and was way better than I've done on Hinge this week. I right. will admit that. That's totally fine. But I've got a question for you, Ian. Yeah. Because we've talked about it before, how important stoppage time is in these games. And if you looked at all three of your picks, when we were at the 80th minute, you were looking on track to be for another 0-3 day, right? Yep. You've played professionally. You played in Germany. You played in the U.S., what is the mindset of players when you're in those last 10 minutes? Because something obviously changes in these games when you're down to the wire like that. This is episode 29 of Stoppage Time, and that's the first time you've ever asked a question. I'm learning. 
Thanks very much, Buckets. That was a great fucking question as well. Thank you for it's asking. From the Cooligan guys yesterday, I had to learn to. You got to learn. Oh yeah. You learn or relax. The Cooligans were great yesterday. Thanks to everybody as well for for listening to that show and sharing it with uh, the Cooligans being on. Um, as a player going into stoppage time, you're nervous. If you're one nil up, two nil up, you're nervous. You concede a goal, you're worried about conceding that equalizer. If you're winning, you're con- you're worried about dropping points or losing the tie. If you're losing, you are giving 110% to try and get it back into a tie. So what you will see and what you will notice, I think everybody out there who loves a beautiful game will notice that the last 10 minutes of any match, there's an extra energy if the scoreline is still possible for the team that's losing to get back into the game. Or if there's a team that's tying, um, they have a tendency to want to push for the, the three points. So you will obviously see in cup games where it is a little bit different, where lower league opposition is trying to chase the team who is uh, in the top flight or in the, the, the division above them in cup competition because they don't want to lose. And there's a lot of money at stake for a lot of these players who are playing in the, the lower tiers. So um, I can tell you that much, that it is a nervous time for a lot of these players and it's where a lot of money is made. Me and you have done very well in stoppage time with live betting. Um, yeah. We've also been crushed a few times with live betting <laughs> in stoppage time. But hence the reason we named the show Stoppage Time. I mean, this was great from the people behind the scenes at points but when they mentioned the word stoppage time I was thinking about it but then we kept coming back to this name and I'm so thankful we stuck with it because stoppage time has made a big difference in the betting culture let's get into Tuesday's bets buckets uh, what was your best bet for Tuesday my best bet was the FA Cup match between Sheffield United and Wrexham AFC and we were watching that game in the studio I was on both teams to score we saw Wrexham have something 10 shots on target in the first half still nil nil we're getting nervous but we knew Sheffield was going to score it was coming eventually and then we had two penalties for Wrexham. Paul Mullen smacked the first one in. We cashed our BTTS, which is great because he did not make the second, but a classic bucket sit there in the FA Cup. It's amazing to think that these um, BTTS bets as well with lower league opposition is something that you still go for, but there's a lot of value there with them. Um, fantastic. Great job mm-hmm. as well. I love to see that, and I know you've got affiliation and a love for Wrexham, so I think we got to do fine here. Maybe we can get you a Wrexham jersey at some point so you can wear on the show. Um, I did also stick in the FA Cup for my Tuesday best bet. It was an FA Cup replay. It was Burnley against Ipswich, and this one, as Bucket pointed out, was very last minute here. Uh, Burnley and Ipswich was tied 1-1. It was 1-1 after three minutes in this game. 1-1 one, one after three minutes. Absolutely ridiculous. And you know when uh, Burnley scored that winning goal buckets? Let me pull it up on my phone. 90 plus four minutes in this game. It was Nathan Tellia assisted by Connor Roberts to make it 2-1. That hit at minus 121 on points bet. It was, of course, Burnley money line for me to win in the 90 minutes. I didn't want extra time, of course. I didn't go for the advance. I actually went for them to go through in 90 minutes but they needed that plus four at uh, stoppage time, which made a big difference there. I'm so happy, and we were happy texting each other as well. Right? <laughs> well, I got a text from you saying, they did it, they did it, they did it. I go, who, what, what happened? Because I, I assumed the game was over. Yeah. I'm not going to watch the extra time. I, I don't really care about, you know, the extra whatever penalties, but they pulled it off. They did, yeah. <sighs> Parlays are something that we've both been enjoying immensely. I'm glad I've introduced this into your life a lot more because you've been very successful with it. Um, you went for a parlay party. How'd you do? This was my one miss of the day, and I was one goal off of cashing another parlay party. I took the KNVB Netherlands Cup. I took four teams that probably nobody had ever heard of, and I just had both teams to score in all of them. I had the Grafschaft versus the Treffers BTTS, and I had Aidzi Alkmaar versus Utrecht BTTS. Hit the Alkmaar game, no problem. Grafschaft scored in the second half in the 48th minute, so it was looking like we were just in that one extra goal, but we weren't able to push for it. So that was the one loss for both of us combined, I believe. It was unlucky. That was the only the only loss. I mean, one goal away from having a full house. That yeah. would have been sensational, actually, coming in here. Absolutely brilliant. I would have loved that. If we'd have just nailed six out of six, we will get there one day. That's what our dream is. That's what we're chasing for everybody out there as well. Um, I did hit my parlay. It was an FA Cup and DFB Pokal double two-leg parlay. Uh, Sheffield United against Wrexham. Sandhausen against Freiburg. Sheffield United and Freiburg uh, as the two-leg to win in 90 minutes. Both hit. Freiburg scored late on two goals, especially to win that game. It was 0-0 all the way up to the 82nd minute, if I'm not mistaken. Thanks to Freiburg for turning it out. Sheffield United got the job done. They won 3-1, but they, they needed late. They were in stoppage <laughs> time to score the 2-1 go-ahead goal and then the 3-1 goal as well. It's a shame for Wrexham. They had a great run, um, but my uh, parlay hit at plus 121 on points bet buckets. Not bad at all. Freiburg getting the job done. They get a win. They're back in the win column. Might be a team I, I actually go back to to bet this weekend at some point. And Sheffield United get the job done. It was a great story for Rex. And I think we'll finish off by saying congratulations to Ryan Reynolds and Michael Haney. Um, they've done a great job promoting Wrexham, and we're proud to see 
these clubs from lower league opposition have this type of investment and make such a noise. It's great. Oh, you love to see it. And yes, they are out of the FA Cup, but they are still currently first in the National League. So they're still running for that promotion. That's what they care about more than anything is just advancing through the tiers of the English League. And they've done an incredible job so far. Tell me about the bonkers. How'd you do? We cashed the bonkers bet, and it's my new favorite league, the Slovakian Premier League and the Slovensky. Your new favorite league? My new favorite league. I'm only <laughs> betting on Slovan Bratislava from now on. We bet on the Slovakian Cup because, like you said, we've got no limits for the Buckets Bonkers bet. I'm going wherever I see value, and I don't think there's a book on earth that knows what's going on in these games like I do. Not to brag, just saying. And it worked because I was on Dukla Banska by Strika versus Slovan Bratislava. Slovan Bratislava money line and under four and a half goals. I wanted to get that juice down a little bit, so I took that under four and a half. It was one, one and a half, two, one in the 50th minute, and so I was starting to sweat that under a bit, but we cashed it. It started the morning off on a good note for us, too. Kind of gave us some energy there. Yeah, before we came in to do the show yesterday, we obviously announced it on the show yesterday as well. Congratulations to that. And real quickly, can I touch upon the fact that you do put in a great deal of study for these teams as well? You just don't throw a dart at a board and, and think, okay, here's Slovakia. Right. You actually give us uh, some great detail and stats as well to back yourself up. Yeah, no, I've, I've put a lot of time into researching a lot of these smaller leagues that are always bettable, but not really a bunch of people want to put the time into them. But you hear a team like Slovan Bratislava, and to me, what I hear is a European team. That is a team that has competed in the Europa Conference, the Europa League before, the playoffs. It's a team that I've bet on before. So once you find that one team in a league that you know, it makes it easier to kind of journey into some of their opponents and find the value in some of these matchups. When we get you up here to New York City for good, and we are here based in the Points Bet Studio here in New York City, we're going to delve a little deeper into how you prepare for these games. Absolutely. Because I'd really like to know the deep, dark secrets, and I think everybody out there would as well, especially all you're following. Um, I also hit with the um, WTF bet. It was Blackpool against Huddersfield. It was bottom of the table banger, I called it. These two teams had barely scored goals this season. They were in 22 and 23rd position in the championship going into this game, and I predicted that both teams would score. The game ended 2-2. It was an absolute banger of a game. It hit a plus 100 on points bet. Um, there was a red card to Blackpool in the first half when they were 1-0 down, and they still scored two goals. So this one uh, was a real, real dive in there. It was a WTF. Like, what the hell are you thinking, Ian? Um, but I managed to hit that one there, and I was very, very happy. So I want to just say a big thank you to everybody out there who actually tailed my bets, because after going on 5 I thought, all right, everyone's just going to step away from me, and they're going to follow buckets here. <laughs> um, and, but there wasn't. There were so many people who said, listen, we love you guys and we're going to support you but i also notice a lot of you are betting responsibly and that is what i truly love we want you to bet we want you to bet with points bet but we want you to be smart with how you're betting and bet responsibly make sure you're not overdoing it and make sure you're having fun with this because we obviously have created a bit of a culture on social media and with and around stoppage time where people are very friendly the community is awesome we absolutely love the reaction people are giving us whether we win or or we lose. And as we get bigger, you're going to get an asshole in there. There's no doubt about it. They come and go. Um, but at the same time, we have created, made, created this fantastic community that people jumped on the back of it. And I couldn't be more happy to say that people were messaging me saying, Ian, congratulations and welcome back. I love that. It's, it's an incredible community we have. And one of the things that makes our community better than any other community in the sports betting world is they do bet responsibly. We've said it time and time again. One good day should never make you and one bad day should never break you. So when we go 0-5, that's going to happen. I'll have my own five days. I promise you I'm going to have my own five days. We understand that's part of how this works, and we just get ready for the 3-3 rebound the next day. We just keep moving forward, and people understand that. They respect that, and they love that for us. Yeah, I think a lot of people enjoyed the fact that you were out at the uh, Nets game last night as well. The reaction was pretty cool on social media. Again, go back to it. Follow Buckets on social media. Follow myself on social media. We need to get Buckets' his Instagram followers up as much as we possibly yeah. can. I keep tagging him in these pictures. I don't think he knows how to work Instagram just yet. So <laughs> follow him on Instagram. I'm incredibly active on Instagram as well when it comes to pictures. Um, you can follow a lot of my life. I introduce uh, my family on Instagram. Uh, my wife, Nicole, and my, my three children are very active on Instagram as well with me. So um, please make sure you follow along at John. Pauline um, across all of our social media platforms. Uh, 10 minutes here, I want to dive into the Champions League. Round 16, we, we obviously you know kind of teased it a little bit yesterday. We dive a little deeper into it. On the February 14th games, um, we do have the first leg of the ties going off in the Champions League. We can't wait for it to come back. We're so excited, which is why we're diving into it. It is Paris Saint-Germain against Bayern Munich, AC Milan against Tottenham. Let's focus on the PSG Bayern Munich game, February 14th. It's a massive game for you. Clearly, you're wearing the shirt. Clearly, you're a Bayern fan. You think they're going through. And you also had a giveaway out there on social media that Bayern would go through and actually potentially win it. I think they're going through. And even with my bias outside of it, I still think they're going through. And a big reason is unfortunately because we do see Kylian Mbappe is going to miss at least that first leg with injury. PSG has been struggling since the World Cup break. They've been 
winning, but not winning by how much they should be. And we're also seeing them get draws against teams they have no business drawing against. That team is really, really good when the big three are all together. When you've got Messi, Neymar, and Mbappe all playing together, that team might be unbeatable. But when one of them have been out, any of the three, they're struggling to produce results in Ligue 1 against these bottom-of-the-table teams. And I'm not confident in that PSG side right now. That being said, Bayern looked horrendous for the first month back from the world break. But you can clearly see they're finding their form. I think that Cancelo pickup was massive yeah. for our guys. And I think it's going to be a close game still. It's probably going to have a shit ton of goals because yeah. that's what these two do. But I think Byron pulls ahead in this one. I think you're right there. I think we see goals yeah. in, in these ties. Not just the first tie, the second tie. Obviously, the home field advantage goes to Paris in the first half, uh, first leg, and then the second leg will be back in Bayern, which is where I think Bayern could benefit. I do worry about the fact that Bayern don't have that killer. Even though Chupo Moting is scoring goals, he's playing against his former club in these ties. He used to play for Paris Saint-Germain. So this is a tough one. It's a personal one for him. Um, he is scoring goals for Bayern this year. Um, but they have so many offensive weapons, it's hard to stop Bayern from scoring goals eventually. It's the defense I'm worried about you got to get their defense right, especially when you're going up against PSG, who are another team who really don't care who they're playing against. They're a dangerous side. They love to attack. If you have all three playing, and I'm not um, saying that Mbappe is going to be out definitely for that first leg. I know it's been claimed, but you can't tell me that they're trying to hurry him back. They mm. might get him back for that first tie. So be very careful. Um, but I, uh, PSG are going to make this a tie, and I think you're right. I think we see a ton of goals. I think we see action, and let's hope we get two thrilling ties. Um, if I was going to pick a team to go far through, I want Bayern Munich to go through, but I think PSG go through. And I'm not, I'm not happy with myself for saying that because I want the Bundesliga teams to do well, especially Bayern Munich. But for some reason, I just got a feeling that PSG are going to invest a hell of a lot in these two ties, especially that first one to have an advantage going back to Munich. Um, AC Milan and Tottenham speaks for itself. Let's go to February 15th. It's Club Brugge against Benfica and then Borussia Dortmund against Chelsea. We got to talk about that game. It's oh, another yeah. Bundesliga team, Borussia Dortmund against Chelsea. Um, it's Chelsea who are not necessarily in great form. They're outside of the European spots in the Premier League right now. They've spent 600 million since the new ownership took over six months ago. They're in a bit of a mess right now. Um, clearly, Graham Potter is in, under a bit of pressure. Uh, they're a difficult team to bet on right now as well, Chelsea. But Borussia Dortmund are scoring goals again. They've got Halea back. They've got Royce back. But their defense might be the worst that we have seen for a long time. Out of any of the UCL ties, this is probably my least favorite one from a betting perspective. On a lot of things you touched on already, Dortmund doesn't defend. And so even a bad attacking Chelsea team is going to find goals in this matchup. Chelsea really doesn't know what they're doing right now. It's going to be a matter of can they put their roster together and find form together before this match? Because yes, they spent $600 million and they brought all these incredible signings, Enzo Fernandez and, and Mudrik and these guys yeah. that are going to be very important to this team. But it's a question of can they find their form and their synergy together before this match starts. And I have no idea, because watching that Chelsea-Fulham game, albeit it was their first game with this new roster, I was not impressed. It's going to get better the longer it goes on, but it's just, is this enough time before this first match for them to build with Dortmund? I don't know yet. I think we could see a draws in these matches. I think we could see some weird 2-2, still high scoring, because yep. Dortmund, as we talked about, can't defend. But Dortmund knows they can't defend, so they're going to go for attack, and they know that the only chance they can beat Chelsea is if they're scoring two or three goals in these games. Yeah, when you look at the squad that Chelsea have, you would think Chelsea, on paper, should be beating pretty much every team in Europe. Yep. Because they've got a great squad. But it does take time to gel all that together. And is Graham Potter the right man to put that squad together? That's going to be the big question here. Uh, first game is in Dortmund. Mm -hmm. So you're going up against the yellow wall. Christian Pulisic going back to Dortmund. That could be a story right there we're looking forward to seeing. Um, but I think the big talking point in this tie is going to be Jude Bellingham. Jude Bellingham playing against an English team, um, probably going to be the most expensive player to depart the Bundesliga in the summer. I really believe he goes in the summer. What a player. What a season he is having. He could write the end of the story here. He could basically be the match winner for this game is what I'm saying. Jude Bellingham is having an unbelievable campaign. And I think he could be the match winner. He scores goals. He's a battler. He wears his heart on his sleeve. He loves playing for Dortmund. He's clearly passionate. I think we do see him in the Premier League because he will come back. He's an England international. And Dortmund might just be a stepping stone, but he clearly loves the club. He wants to do well for Dortmund. I don't think they're good enough to win the Champions League, Dortmund, mm -mm. but I think they're good enough to get past the Chelsea side, so I'm going to go for Borussia Dortmund over the two ties to knock Chelsea out. What are you? I'm going to back you on that, and I know that's going to be a hot take, but I, I, I'm with you. I think Dortmund pulled this off. 
All right, let's move on to the, the week later ties in the first leg. It is Liverpool against Real Madrid, Eintracht Frankfurt against Napoli. We've already kind of pointed out here it's a difficult one for Frankfurt, even though they've got this amazing support against Napoli, who are in such fine form right now. Um, I think we both kind of think that Napoli will do well there. Yeah. But let's focus on Liverpool and Real Madrid real quickly, because Real Madrid right now, difficult team to bet because they're not playing well. Even though they're difficult to beat, they're not playing well, and they're not winning comfortably. They have a lot of old players in that midfield. A lot of the young players are finding it hard to get into the team right now because of the older players. Benzema's hot and cold since he won Ballon d'Or. We have no idea if he's even going to play or turn up. And then Liverpool right now, I mean, that's a bit of a mess. Yeah, this is another one that's just difficult to bet because you really don't know what's going to happen here. It's a, I think a big factor of this is will Benzema play. If Benzema plays, I lean Real Madrid to win the tie. If he doesn't play, I think it's going to be an incredibly messy game where we could see even some 0-0 type scorelines because this Liverpool side is shambolic this year. I have no idea what the hell's going on. Their injury list is longer than one of those old CVS receipts. Like, it's just, it's a nightmare there right now. Klopp seems more and more frustrated. Every time I see him in a post-game interview, he just looks like he doesn't want to be there anymore. It's a very, very difficult matchup. I lean Real Madrid pending a hel or healthy and playing Benzema. But it's just, this is a tough one for me. I'm very concerned about this match. I'm with you there. I think Jurgen Klopp is having a, a difficult time right now because he doesn't know how to handle it. No. You know, and I think uh, this one's very difficult to pick. I can't pick a winner for this tie. I really can't. I can't sit here and say, yeah, put your money here. I just, uh, there's no way. Liverpool against Real Madrid right now, maybe Real Madrid favoring it because of how Liverpool are losing games. Real Madrid are not losing games right now. They're, they're not playing well, but they're not losing games as easy, even though they did just I was lose say, to Mallorca. Mallorca was the <laughs> exception there. <laughs> the island, the, the Buckets Party island. Um, okay, let's move ahead to February 22. It's Leipzig against Manchester City, Inter Milan against Porto. Inter Milan Porto is a cracking game. It's going to be very close to call. I can't wait to get stuck into that one in a couple of weeks' time. But let's focus on Leipzig against Manchester City right now. City just going through the financial fair play. Obviously, regulations breach with Premier League. It looks like they've uh, got themselves into a bit of trouble here. Leipzig in good form, even though they had no the weekend against Cologne, which cost me dearly. And everybody out there who tailed me, uh, Manchester City would say be a favorite. Let me ask you this before we yep. jump into that. Is there any chance with all the financial fair play stuff going on that City do not get to participate in this UCL? Because no. I've seen rumors on that on Twitter. They're going to play no matter what you'd say. Yeah, because I think what happens is it extends to past the season. So they're going to draw out all of this process until they find the result at the end of the season. Okay. So Manchester City might lift the trophy this year. Okay. Well, and then after that, we could find out what their punishment is. Gotcha. Well, pending that, I think with everything going on, City has one of two responses. Either to tuck their tail between their legs and buckle or say, F everyone, let's just do everything we can do here to end on a good note before everything goes to hell here in six months or whatever. I think City kill Leipzig. I know Leipzig is in tremendous form, but they're not going to have Nkuku back before the first leg. He's back in training. Is he? Yes. Ooh. He's back in training. And that first leg is not until February 22nd. Just going to put it out there. Okay. He's back in training. That changes it a little bit just because I think Leipzig score if Nkuku's back. Yeah. But overall, I think City understands all the frustrations going on, and they're just going to focus and everything on the pitch. I think City win this game in pretty dominating fashion. I've got them getting through this round no problem, but... the. All the crap going on is going to make it difficult for everyone. There was a game, I think it was last year, it might be the season before in the Champions League, where Leipzig played against Manchester City away from home. Nkunku scored a hat-trick, and they lost the game 5-3. Do you remember that? I do remember that. That was a wild That's game. tough. <laughs> so that tells you the importance of having Nkunku back. I mean, this guy knows how to score against Manchester City. I think Leipzig do score against Manchester City, but at the end of the day, Manchester City should be too strong. You have an Erling Haaland up there. you got to do better with the with the ball, getting it, uh, chances. Pending him shooting, created. of course. Hmm? Pending Holling shooting, of course, because he didn't last shoot. time. He shot at some point. Yeah, that was disappointing. Well, thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> yeah, I got you. Uh, so there you go. That was a quick look at the Champions League as well. Um, we're not going to take a quick break. We're actually going to fire all the way through the show today because um, we got a busy day. You know what yeah. I mean? It's been a long week. We've had a lot of fun. And uh, we, we do a, a break occasionally where we can have a sip of water. But we're going to just fire through it right here for all of you. And we're going to give you our best bets for everything that's coming up, um, of course, this week. We have Thursday and Friday some big fixtures coming up that we're looking forward to. So we have some best bets. And predictions for you. I want a best bet. I want a parlay, and I want a bonkers bet from you, buckets. Please, let's start with your best bet for Thursday or Friday. So for my best bet, it's a league that we haven't bet on the show here today, but a league that I'm getting more and more into as the season goes on. I'm looking at Liga MX, which is Mexico's first league of soccer here. I'm looking at a match between Atlas FC and CF Monterrey. I'm taking both teams to score at minus 135, and for me, more than anything, this is a system play. Liga MX is not known to be a very high-scoring league. It's a very aggressive league, a very physical league with Pretty good defenses most of the time, but both of these teams have played five games this season. BTTS has hit in eight of those combined ten games, wow. and these two teams are averaging over one and a half goals scored and over one and a half goals conceded per game. They're starting their season off by saying 
let's play like the German teams do, where they score a ton of goals and they refuse to defend in the process. And at minus 135 for me at the consistent rate that it's hitting, that's a fantastic play considering their, or their current form. I'm certainly not doubting you when it comes to that bet. That's for sure. I'm going to probably tell you on that bet just because it's you. And I know you've put the work in to get that one right here. <laughs> uh, my best bet for the week is Friday afternoon. It's League. Um, it is the French League, of course. It's Nice against Ajaxio. Nice minus 180 on the money line. Ajaxio plus 550 on the money line. Certainly uh, stay away from Ajaxio right now. My bet is Nice money line plus the over one and a half total goals in the game. It is minus 105 on points bet. Um, I think Nice coming off the back of that huge win against Marseille. It yep. was a big win where they surprised everybody. I think they won by three goals to one away from home, which was a spectacular performance from them. They're starting to get things right again. Consistency. They made a change with the coach. Consistency is starting to creep in. They're eighth in the table trying to get into a European place, which is massive because they want to win every single game. Undefeated in the last five. They've won four of those last five games. They're tough to score goals against and no home defeats since last September. So it would be a massive surprise if Ajaxio did go ahead and win this game. I feel like Nisa nice really pushing hard for that European spot. Ajaxio right now, as I've mentioned before, they're in the relegation zone. They've conceded in 10 of their 11 away games this season in the league play. Um, and they've got one win in their last six league games. Uh, Nisa nice to win for sure. No doubt. And I don't think any of us can really question that, especially when you look at the money line. It tells us so that they're clear favorites in this tie. Um, minus uh, 105. I'll have to take it. Nice are just too good. I think they score goals. I love watching them play recently. They've started to play some really entertaining football. So watch out for Nice creeping into those European places. And it starts with this game against Ajaxio. So I'm going to stick on the money line as I repeat myself. Nice money line, over one and a half total goals, minus 105 on points bet. Can't wait for that best bet to hit Buckets Thoughts. Well, I watched that Nice versus Marseille game, and that is a completely different team than we saw before the World Cup break. Yeah. They are vicious on the counterattacks, and Ajaxi was non-existent. I think they're going to get eaten alive by this Nice team. I might even ladder that up to Nice money line. I might be greedy and take over two and a half goals, because I think that's going to be a smackdown. Did you notice I wore the uh, the bucket hat today? I did notice the bucket hat, yeah. The it's bucket a... hat for buckets. I that's get what one. my wife said. So... <laughs> she said, go wear the bucket hat for buckets. I don't know if you like it. We could actually, you know, I think we should get some merch out soon. Oh, know? yeah. Get some merch out for our, bucket our loyal hat. listeners. The Buckets Bucket. Oh, yeah. Buckets Bucket. <laughs> I love wearing a bucket hat. Like, it's it's like my thing. I just love wearing bucket hats. I love wearing hats in general, <laughs> but bucket hats in particular, just, you know, had a ring to it today as well. Oh, yeah. All right, get, let's get into the parlay party. Looking forward to that. Between Thursday and Friday, there's a lot of games to choose from. Where are you going? I'm going to the German Bundesliga on yeah! Friday. Yeah! And I'm doing the same game parlay, so I'm only touching on one game here. The Schalke versus Wolfsburg match. Wolfsburg, are we on the same game? No, no, I'm not going to the same game. I'm just scared of where you're going here. Go. Oh, I think Wolfsburg is hitting way above their clip right now. This is a tremendous team that is finding goals every single week, except two weeks ago when I bet on them. I forget who it was against. But besides that... The Union Berlin. Union Berlin, that was it. But besides that, they just put two against Bayern, and it should have been three with that kind of iffy VAR call at the yes. end. They're a team that is consistently scoring a tremendous amount of goals, playing a relegation-bound Schalke team. And the Wolfsburg money line is a little bit soft here. It's sitting around minus 160, mm -hmm. but I'm taking Wolfsburg money line plus over one and a half goals team total for Wolfsburg. And that gets you depth to plus 150 on points bet. 2 0 game, 2 1 game, 3 0 game, doesn't matter. Wolfsburg to win and to have at least two goals plus 150, I think is great value. I am scared about this one. Okay. I'm just going to give my opinion on Let's this. Hear it. One. I have bet against Schalke the last two weekends, and they have both screwed me because it was 0 0 and 0 0. They don't concede many goals. They're not scoring many goals. They're in the relegation zone, and I'm frightened. But you should see Wolfsburg, who are a team that attack and are dangerous, score goals against them. Absolutely. But I'm just going to tell you I'm nervous because Schalke, the way they have played the last couple of weeks defensively, they've been pretty solid. It's down to how Wolfsburg take their opportunities because mm -hmm. they will get chances, but you got to take them against the Schalke side because you just don't get many of them. My bet, of course, in the parlay party is Friday afternoon. It is called the Friday Surprises. Looking forward to this one. It's double <laughs> trouble. It's Serie A. AC Milan against Torino. Oh, 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 buckets, I'm going now. It is Eredivisie, AZ Alkmaar against Excelsior. My bets is a two-leg parlay. It is AC Milan and Alkmaar to win. It is currently sitting at plus 120 oh. on points. Bet buckets before I get into it. What are your thoughts, quickly? I very rarely disagree with you, but Ian, I hate this already. I, <laughs> because of Milan. Because of Milan. <laughs> Have you watched Milan's games the past month? Yep. They're awful. I know. They're terrible. I know. And they're going to win? Listen, I like to live on the red line here. Oh. And, and I know a lot of people out there have probably lost a few tailing me because of what you just said there. Thanks, Bucket, for that one. But let me just explain <laughs> it to you, all right? Listen, I get it. 
I get it. They're in poor form right now. They can't buy a win. Zero wins in their last five games. Didn't look good in the Derby game. In fact, they look pretty awful. Um, they have been laughed at. People are humiliating AC Milan right now. Uh, Milan, Milan are a wounded animal. They're, they're just like, you know, everyone's laughing at them. The newspapers are making fun of them. The media is making fun of them. Their fans are starting to get on their back. Um, but when you see a wounded team like that, wait for the reaction, the explosion. I think that comes this weekend. I'm actually putting money on it coming this weekend. Torino are right behind Milan in the table, so it certainly won't be easy for them because Torino will sense an opportunity to maybe leapfrog Milan in the table, certainly get closer to them. So be very careful with this bet. I wouldn't go too heavy on it. Um, I honestly think that Milan have an explosive performance and watch out for Leal. He's an angry man right now. A lot of BS has been written about Leal, especially when it comes to his contract situation. Watch out for Leal exploding in this game. I really think he can actually get a goal in this game if he starts this game. And in the other game, it's Eredivisie, it's Alkmaar. They're pretty much a lock for me. I, I mean, that. they are for you. You oh, love yeah. Alkmaar. Um, they've got a chance to go top of the table as well with that victory on Friday. So that should be an easy win. Plus 120. I'm really surprised that this line is so friendly. And it's probably because AC Milan have been pretty dreadful in the last few weeks. But I'm just waiting for that explosion. So I'm relying heavily on Milan getting that explosion. Uh, I'm, I don't need to delve any further into that one, Buckets. I know you disagree with me on that one. So let's get to your bonkers bet. <laughs> For the bonkers bet, I'm doing a bet I've never done on the show before. Yes. It is my least favorite bet in the soccer world, but the value is it's just here right now. I'm looking at the Grecian Cup and a match between AEK Athens nice. and Olympiakos Piraeus. Oh, what a great game. Fantastic game. But here's why the bet is so crazy for me. Both teams not to score. BTTS no, which I have never bet in my life, but I looked at this game for probably an hour this morning and I don't see goals here. It's a cup game that neither of them are really going to care too much about because they are focused on winning the table. Mm -hmm. It's a match where two of the last three times they've played, the match has ended nil-nil. Mm -hmm. And they currently have the best two defenses in all of Greek. Olympiakos has conceded 11 goals over their 20 matches. AEK Athens has conceded eight goals over their 20 matches. This is a game where I would not be surprised at all if it was 0-0 at halftime with a late winner on either side in the 80th minute kind of getting towards that stoppage time. Yep. But this is a match where I just do not see goals. Even though they're both fantastic attacking teams, these are two teams that prioritize defense over everything. And I don't know which team wins, and I would not be surprised if it's a 1-0 either way. So that BTTS no covers you, even if there's a 1-0 winner on either side. Great bet. Really great bet. I love the BTTS no. Not many people go for it because it's dangerous play. Um, we have to make sure we mention it to our graphics master, <laughs> Yoshi, because we need to make sure that there's a no in there, that people see it this time, Yep. Um, for sure, because this one we don't want to confuse people with, so BTTS, no for buckets. Wow, don't normally hear that from you. Yeah. I mean, that is something uh, completely unusual for you, I especially had to, going there. In the hotel this morning, I practiced saying BTTS, no in the mirror for 20 minutes because I was so not used to having that no to it. I was afraid I was going to say it wrong. But I know Yoshi has her back, so we'll be good with the graphics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You looking in the mirror, talking about betting, <laughs> makes me laugh just a little bit. Um, I'm also sticking to Friday for my WTF bet here. Uh, again, I'm going to just mention to everybody, please bet responsibly out there, especially when you're tailing this one, because it's a little out there. I'm going to La Liga. It's Cadiz against a Girona. It's normally the BTTS for buckets. It's normally a bank. But Girona, it is not hit for the last two match days. I'm also tailing that with Birmingham City against West Bromwich Albion in the championship. So my bet is a two leg both teams to score parlay it is plus 256 on points bet buckets you want to hear my reasoning why yeah let's hear it all right so Girona have gone back to back without BTTS we've seen that because normally it's a bank for you yep. I think that changes against this Cadiz side Cadiz are a dangerous team fighting for their life at the bottom of the table uh, they have scored in six of their last seven games in La Liga so they know how to score a goal they just don't know how to win games. So we're happy for them to attack. We know they don't care much about defending. Um, I feel like games like this, when you're on the road against teams, you can normally bring a good performance. And we see that from Girona. They don't mind if they play at home or away. They like to attack. They're an attacking-minded team. And I think they're a good side. So I really believe that we get Girona back to scoring ways. But we also believe that Girona is going to concede another goal in this game. I think Girona could win this game. But I think we see BTTS hitting this game. So I'm expecting a 2-1, a 3-1, or a 3-2 game. Something like that. I really think that Girona could win this game. It could be a high-scoring game. But if BTTS hits there, that's all I really care about. So I'm having a two-leg parlay. So the second game is Birmingham City against West Bromwich Albion. This is a Birmingham derby. Birmingham desperate for wins. Massive 4-3 win away from home against Swansea at the weekend, which is huge for them. Scoring goals, conceding goals. 4-3. See how I mentioned that scoreline right there? West Brom have scored in their last six league games. They are clearly a favorite going into this game. Derby games are wild, especially when it comes to Birmingham area. Um, it's a little juicy. It's plus 256. I am a little out there by going for this bet, but that's why it's called the WTF bet. 
bet responsibly with this one. Maybe drop your unit size and bet responsibly because that's what I'm going to do, but I'm definitely jumping on board with this one. Thoughts on Girona real quickly because I know you stayed away from it this week. I love the Girona look here because I love betting on teams like Cadiz who are relegation bound that have no reason to do anything but attack. Cadiz, yes, they've had, or Girona's had their weird couple clean sheets and that's fine. It's not going to continue. That form is not sustainable for Girona. I agree with you on a 2-1, 3-1, 3-2 kind of game. I think we see a lot of goals in that first match. Thanks, Bucky. Thanks for backing me up there, man. I I have no idea about the championship. I will say I know more about the Kazakhstani Premier League than I do the English Championship. Championship is a league that I've done tremendously bad on in the past. Yeah. So I stay a little away from it now. Kind of learn my place there. You got to go to your safe place, Buckets. Uh, For me, it's Kazakhstan. For Kazakhstan. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Buckets, great to have you back in the studio, man. I mean, listen, being here in New York City is so important for you. I know you're um, obviously enjoying this project immensely. We're so proud of the great work that you're doing. Um, I do always like to finish on a positive note, especially when you're in the studio and you're heading back home. Um, Just want to say thanks for everything you're doing. Everybody out there is tailing your bets, is following you. Um, The following that you have, we're introducing to stoppage time and points bet. More people are betting with points bet because of you. Um, and, And that is never undervalued. You're great appreciate it here for all the great work that you're doing. I'm not going to make you cry. I'm not going to make Don't you cry it. this time. Don't do it. Surprises have already been here and gone, so uh, I'm glad you enjoyed your time at the Brooklyn Nets game. Um, but listen, this is a massive project that we have taken on board here, but it's working out really well, and I hope you're enjoying it as much as we are enjoying having you a part of it. Dude, I'm loving every second of it. You have been nothing but great to me. Points bet, stoppage time, all the guys behind the scenes. It's been a tremendous process from start till now, and this is only just the beginning. We've got so many huge plans for stoppage time. I know you and I have talked privately about all the stuff we want to add to the show, and I'm grateful to be a part of it, man. It is a project, that is for sure. Um, but very quickly we have taken off and sometimes it's difficult to strap the seatbelts on so sometimes you got to hold on to the door as well just because it's going so fast it's a little bit crazy right now safe travels back to you um, we are back together on Friday with our best bets and predictions for the weekend um, I'll be in my home studio you'll be in your home studio let's hope your electricity is back on by the time oh, you get back fingers there. crossed I have heat when I get back that'd yep. be nice and the dog will be okay Freya will be fine as well she'll right? be good she'll be good we need some heat in Bucket's house please as much <laughs> as possible so safe journeys back to you and um, thanks for all the great work that you've done uh, especially being back up here in New York City it's been a, a strange kind of atmosphere around here yesterday you know we had, a, we had a lot of big people walking around here yesterday you know in our points bet studios it was kind of cool because everybody was wearing nice collared shirts they were all looking smart everyone was on their nice behavior did you notice that yeah, everyone was super I wore a turtleneck yesterday that's how you know I was trying to be a part of it as well contribute yeah. to the nice environment but yeah you could tell something was in the air you could tell something was in the air so there was a lot of big people around here and you know what's a great sign for me and you What's that? We have not been fired. <laughs> that is a great thing. That is true. After my, my card still works on the door. All the power of people being here yesterday, we are still here. We're still on air for everybody out there. We're still pumping out the material for you, pumping out the shows and pumping out the bets, and that will not stop. Uh, big thanks uh, to our partners, Points Bet, for everything they have done to create this platform for us and um, for our production team behind the scenes, for everyone behind the scenes that are putting the show on for you. We cannot thank you enough. I mean, putting it out there on YouTube and putting it out on the podcast platforms, so tremendously important. But also, don't forget to go download the app and bet with PointsBet. That's what we want you to do. We want you to bet responsibly, but we want you to have fun with PointsBet because that's what we're all about. Fun, and me and Buckets are here to produce winners. We're not here just trying to fish you in so that you lose money. No, no, no. That's not our game here. And that's not PointsBet's game here. We are trying to entertain you and bring entertainment value to what PointsBet is all about. We know a lot of people are going to jump on the app and bet on soccer because it's already happening throughout the World Cup into domestic seasons. And now all of a sudden we're getting ready for that Champions League. It's almost here, baby. It's so close. It's so close. Valentine's Day, right? That's what Valentine's it's on. Day. I don't care about that. UCL's yeah. coming back. <laughs> UCL is coming back, Ian. <laughs> Swipe right buckets on February 14. <laughs> uh, big thanks to everybody out there. Please make sure you like, subscribe, review, and uh, share the show as much as you possibly can. That means most to us. Um, I really appreciate the reviews and the five stars and the likes and the subscribes. Uh, put the notifications up. And um, we're also listening to your uh, messages. We also got one yesterday. Someone was requesting that we put a graphic up at the end of our shows where we show all of our bets, our best bets for the, the games coming up. We're working on that for you as well. So any ideas you have, please share them with us as much as you possibly can. A quick reminder, we're back on Friday. We're um, firing out all the shows for you guys. That's what we're here for. Uh, keep it coming, and we will keep the, the content coming to you as much as possible. So as always, bet responsibly, but make sure you absolutely... Have it! <laughs>